Welcome back everyone. This time we are going to talk about control styles and their templates. For this tutorial we're going to pretend we're trying to dark theme an application. So set your background to something dark, add you a scroll viewer with a rectangle inside tall enough to where your scroll bar is usable, and then add a button. To show you when and why you might want to use a custom control template, I'm just going to try to dark theme this button. So like we did last video, I'm going to access the Windows resources. Inside, I'm going to create a style, and the target type of that style is going to be button. Now we can create a setter, and let's make a property background, and let's make the value something slightly darker than our window, maybe like that. And that'll darken our button up. And then we're going to need another setter for foreground to lighten our text up. So maybe we'll use some ease. And now we have a dark theme button. The problem is when we run this and hover, we still have the light button theme hover color. And it looks really bad on a dark theme button. Now, many, many times the properties that are available to us are all that we need. But in this case, if we look for a property for something like hover color or mouse over color, we're not going to find it because the mouse over trigger of a button sets the background color. And all of that happens within the controls base control template. So to access those things, we have to actually override the default style of the control and define its control template with our changes. Now this next part, I'm going to do backwards on purpose. And this is really important because this is one of the parts where so many WPF developers get hung up on. If you Google, how do I change a button in WPF's hover color? You're going to find a lot of the right answers, but you're going to find even more problems where part of those answers don't work. So when searching for the answer, you'll find that you need to add a section called style.triggers. And that is true, we do need that. So let's go ahead and add that. And in our triggers, we need to add a trigger for the property is mouse over. And we want to say if that value is true, then what we want to do is have a setter for the property of background to set our value to something that we want our button to change to. And for our dark theme, let's make that 0052C1, which is kind of a medium to dark blue. And this is where a lot of people end up. It looks right. We have a style. We have a trigger that fires on mouse over and changes our background to blue. But the problem is when we run this, it does not work. And that's why if you Google WPF style triggers, the first suggestion that it will give you is not working. And that is because the control template already defines these triggers and has hard coded colors inside them. So for our custom triggers to work, we need to redefine the content template. What that's going to look like at its very core is a setter with the property of template. But instead of closing the tag and having a value here, we're going to have an open tag. And then we're going to have another one with the value inside of it. And then in there, we are going to create a control template. And just like we have the styles target type of button, we're going to have a control type of target type button and then end our tag. And now you can see that our button has visually disappeared and that's because we have to find it an empty new control template. So to make this look like a button, at the very least, we're going to need some sort of background and some sort of way to show the content. So I'm going to start with a border and that border can have a background and I could set that background Two, 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 two. And that's going to make my button background show up. However, now if I go down to my button and try to override the background to say green for this particular button, it's not going to work because in my template, my border background is hard coded. So what I can do here instead of setting this is I can put curly braces and I can use a template binding and bind the border background color to the button itself's background color. So I can say template binding background. And what that's going to do is it's going to automatically tie this property to this one. So if it gets overridden, this also will get overridden. So now we have a background working. 
So now inside of our border, we can add a content presenter and that's going to make our content display. Now, when you do that, you may need to rebuild your solution so that this updates. We notice our button text is in the top left. So we can do horizontal alignment center, vertical alignment center to make it center it like it normally would in a button. Now we have something that looks like a button and we could go to the other border properties like brush and thickness and we could bind those to the control properties just like we did our background and we could create this template however we wanted to make our button look however we want it. But the important thing is that we have a control template that is custom now and because we do our style triggers will work. So now when we run and we hover Instead of that light theme, we get our custom blue color here when we hover over our button. One huge thing to note here is since we created this control template completely from scratch, this is it. This is our whole button style, and this is the only trigger that our button now has. So if we run, no longer will our button have a different color when it's pressed down with the mouse, or if the button was disabled, it wouldn't gray out. We would have to create all of that ourselves since we're doing all of this from scratch. And we would just have to go in and add things like property is pressed. We would want our background to be something different. So we'll say green. That way hover is going to be blue. And if the mouse press is going to be green. But you can see, especially in a complicated control, how starting from scratch could be a massive amount of work. Now it gives you complete control and it can be amazing, especially for controls you have to reuse. But sometimes it's best not to start from scratch and to start from a full template and then modify it however you want. Before we jump into this, I want to warn you that anytime you generate or copy a lot of code that you've never seen before, it can be a lot harder to understand than if you wrote it yourself. So going into this, if you decide to do this, be prepared to do some research and put your troubleshooting hat on because it can be very complicated. Okay, so let's say we did not want to start from scratch. So let's delete our button style altogether. Now what we can do is extract the current style or the current content template by itself from any control. And to do that, we want to push F4 to bring up our properties window. We want to select whatever control we want the style or template of. You want to scroll all the way down to miscellaneous and drop that open. And then you want to find style. Over to the right of style, you see a blue cylinder. If you click the drop down arrow, you can convert it to a new resource. And you can do an explicit style or a global style, just like we did in the last video. And what that's going to do is add this entire style with the content template to your window resources. So let me stretch this over here so we can see a little better. So now all of the color brushes that it uses, the focus visual style, all of the properties, the control template with all of its built-in default triggers are available for you to change immediately. So for our example, we could change the background, which is button static background, which is defined here. So we could use our do 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 do. The foreground is using a dynamic resource, which is a system color. So let's change it to use a static resource. And let's make that use button.static.foreground. And let's add a button.static.foreground. And we'll make that our e, -E, 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 e So now our foreground color is set. And then we had a is mouse over to where we wanted our background to be changed. So that is button.mouseover.background, which is here. So we could change that to be our 0052C1. So now when we run, we get the same effect as we had before, but we have the rest of the button styling and the default content template behind it. Now there's one more resource that I want to show. So I'm going to blow away this style we just made. So it's not in our way. So the last thing I want to show you is a Microsoft resource that gives you a lot of control style and template examples. So if you go to the link in the description, 
you'll be taken to a learn.microsoft.com page called Control Styles and Templates. From here, you can either look at the sidebar or scroll down on the page itself to see all of the controls that it has style and template information about. Since we have a scroll viewer in our example, let's look to see about styling the scroll bar inside of it. So it will give you general information about the template here, all of the states that it can be in, and then it will give you an example. And usually the examples they use, they try to use some non-normal things like linear gradient brushes, and occasionally you'll see animations. So here's a storyboard with a color animation using keyframes. It can kind of show off some of WPF's capabilities while showing you example on how to implement them. These resources can not only be a great place to start on creating a custom control, but they can also give you a lot of ideas that you might want to implement yourself. And sometimes they're exactly what you want. Now, if we look through this XAML, you can see that it's not only targeting a scroll bar, but all of the parts of the scroll bar. So it gives you all of the information that you need. So here's the style for the scroll bar line button. And here's the scroll bar page button. And here's the scroll bar thumb button, which is what goes up and down on the side. And then we have our control template. And then we have the control template for the horizontal scroll bar and then the base style for the scroll bar itself. And then under that, it will give you all of the resources that the example requires. So if we wanted to check this out, we could just go to the top here and we can copy all of these styles. And we can go back and we could paste them into our window resources, go back to the resources required and copy all of those. And then we're going to want to paste those above our styles as it relies on them. And then if we push this back over, you can see the Microsoft example implemented scroll bar style. Now, I know this can be a lot to take in, but hopefully learning how to do it from scratch first at least gives you an idea of how it works and how to implement it. But going along with the last video, I highly recommend that you put these styles in a separate file because as you can see, with just our scroll bar, we have almost 400 lines of style code that can really clog up our main view XAML files, especially if you have multiple controls. That's as far as I'm going with styles for now. Next up, we are going to start the first of several videos on how to use MVVM. So thank you for watching everybody. I really appreciate you. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Happy coding and as always until next time, take care.